The believers gathered on Bourbon Street tonight as New Orleans Saints mania reaches a fever pitch. Good evening. More Saints history tonight. For the first time in their 21 years, the Saints have made the playoffs. They clinched at least a wild card berth with a franchise record sixth win in a row. The final Saints 44, Tampa Bay 34. And Chris Myers joins us now with the story. It's, uh, it's amazing because Jim Morris said right away, well, he finally admitted it, which you'll hear, but he said, we're not done yet. Now he has more goals. They're thinking division title. But, but you have news we from have Jim news. Mora. Yes, this is a direct message. No Jiminy Christmas here. The Saints were the last ones through the door, but it made it all the sweeter. Their bucking of Tampa combined with losses by the Eagles and Cardinals clinched a playoff spot, as John mentioned, first ever. Now every team in the NFL has at least reached the postseason at one point in their franchise's history. The Saints made history with their six straight win and they did it by jumping on rookie Vinny Testaverde. He started and fumbled the first two times uh, the Tampa had the ball. On this one it's knocked loose and Bruce Clark jumps in there to recover it and the offense had a big game. Bobby Hebert best day as a pro rolling and hitting John Tice for a touchdown. His first two scoring tosses were to Tice and it made it 14 to nothing. It was 28 to 10 at the half. Mel Gray who had an outstanding day of returning punts had this one at a team record 80 yard punt return. Both set up uh, touchdowns as a test of and they needed all the offense they could get. He caught fire three touchdown passes for him to keep the game close. That had Jim Morris somewhat upset but uh, his team really never lost the grip on this one. Hebert again in the second half when the Saints needed to move the ball and maintain possession. Uh, they did. He connected with Eric Martin on a nice catch and carry to set up a field goal. The Saints win it 44-34, and uh, what fans have waited for for 21 years will come their way this Christmas. They have clinched, at worst, a wild card spot, and they're still thinking division titles. So with a 9-3 and record and just three regular season games to go, Mora finally said it. These were his first words in the locker room after the game. Right. Yeah, I think we ought to talk about the playoffs. What the heck? <laughs> you, want, you got any questions about the playoffs? Are you a playoff no. team? Yeah, yeah, you bet we are. You bet we are. When you get there, you are a playoff team, and the New Orleans Saints 1987 are a playoff team. Jim Moore, very excited. He just ran right out the door there. Uh, but he admitted it. All right, let's look at the standings. Can we show you this? Let's go full screen on what remains. The Saints are 9-3 and three and a game back of the 49ers in the NFC West, who are 10-2. and two. The remaining games, the Saints have to play the Oilers, Cincinnati, and Green Bay, the 49ers, Chicago, Atlanta, and the Rams. Now, if the 49ers would lose to the Rams in their final game, that would win the division for the Saints if they win their remaining three games. Obviously, if the Niners lose two more, the Saints have a chance to win in the NFC West. But what we know for now, and what all those people were hollering about down on Bourbon Street, it is official. They're in the playoffs, and they will, with Minnesota and Chicago playing, uh, stand a very good chance of hosting that wild card game if they don't win the division. Like the sign said, shoulda, coulda, woulda, gonna. Gonna, and they, they did it. That speech turned everything around. And we'll have more in sports, and of course, Stan Brock, who's been here a long time, has seen the worst of it, now sees the best of it. He's with us on fourth down on four. That is poetic justice. Yeah. Right. Thanks, right. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Well, today we heard from Coach Mora what Saints fans have been saying for weeks. Tonight, they're shouting it from the Superdome to Bourbon Street and beyond. We're in the playoffs. Arthel Neville reports. <laughs> made predictions hours before kickoff. I think the Saints are going to win. By how much? Oh, by about seven points. Saints, all the way. By how much? 20. That good. Jim and the Greek predict 27-13. That sounds like a good prediction. How many points do you think they're going to win by? Hmm. Then my daddy answered it. Once the 66,000 plus fans made it into the Superdome, they cheered and prayed their team to victory. The fans weren't let down. Only three and a half minutes into the game, the Saints scored their first touchdown. At that point, the fans knew it was all over. I knew it was over before I even came to the game. I knew it was over. Vinny Testaverde, go home. The Saints are number one. We're going to playoffs. 
In the end, the Saints bombed the Buccaneers 44-34. Some of the fans' pregame predictions were off, but they don't care. All that matters is the Saints won. That's right. As long as the Saints win, it don't matter what the score is. While the game was the highlight of the day, the real celebration didn't begin until it was over. We're going to party. No work tomorrow. It's a holiday. The governor told us it's a holiday tomorrow. The final buzzer was Tom Benson's cue, and as a special treat to the loyal fans, Benson and the Saintsations boogied around the dome floor. It was a special celebration for a special team. For the first time ever in sports history, the Saints are going to the playoffs. Arthel Neville, Eyewitness News, Night Watch. And another big... What a victory. But I have to admit, in the third quarter, I got a little frightened. I think maybe Jim Mora did too, only because Testaverde got hot. He was incredible and uh, was putting points on the board. But the Saints, you know, last week their defense did it against the Steelers. This time, I think their offense really came through, put 44 points up on the board. Amazing. Jiminy Christmas. A little he ironic. Made the touchdowns. <laughs> Jiminy, the word of the week. All right. Still he, trying to find out what it means. For yeah, Saturday. we'll look it up. All right, as we mentioned, there was no coulda, woulda, shoulda. It was done. And, and kind of the way Jim Mora wanted it to be. His offense exploded. His defense was tough enough and the hometown fans witnessed a playoff clinching win over Tampa in the sold out Superdome. Vinny Testaverde starting for the Bucks, and uh, on his first attempted pass he's hitting the ball knocked loose and Bruce Clark recovers and quickly sets up Bobby Hebert on an eight yard touchdown. This is what you like. The offense takes it right in. No field goal here. Seven to nothing next series. Testaverde fumbles the snap this time. Pat Swilling recovers and then again Hebert uh, looks for John Tice. Uh, they said they just put these plays in for this particular game, and he hits him in the end zone 14 to nothing. It was 14-7 when Reuben Mays ran in from the seven in the second quarter. Saints again up by 14. Now, Mel Gray, no block punts for the Saints today's special teams, but Joe Marciano says, well, we'll do it another way. Look at this on a punt return as Gray dashes, and the punter just does drag him down around the five-yard line, or he would have been in a club record 80-yard punt return, and he had another one later that was a 58-yard or 56-yarder. It set up a Hilliard touchdown. The Saints, a 28-7 halftime lead. Mays made it 38-10 on the third quarter. Testaverde, though, the great game after the early shakes, finished with 369 yards. Look at that one, three touchdowns. Testaverde threw two interceptions, though. This one picked off by Ricky Jackson. That gave the Saints a 27 uh, interceptions as a team. That is a club record, and it sealed uh, their uh, first ever playoff bid, and maybe the uh, the Saints and their fans uh, have the new version of America's team. They end up winning by 10, and as you saw at the top of the newscast, Mora finally admitting his club a playoff contender and dedicated the win to those who have been around the Saints the longest. The people that I am most pleased for now, now that we have achieved the playoffs is, is, and I mentioned this in there in the locker room, is, is our players, our older players, and, and none of them are really old, but our guys that have been around here for six, seven uh, years, the, the Stan Brock, Dave Wehmer, Johnny Poe, Ricky Jackson, and I can't name them all, but those are the guys that I think uh, deserve uh, uh, what we're feeling right now more than uh, than anyone in this organization. The nine wins, it is official. No one can take that away from us now. Feels real good. It's been a long time since I won nine games in any season I participated in. And I, I don't think it really has hit me yet. I think I'll sit back and reflect over his last long six years of this evening with my wife and then, then get excited, especially now that we've clinched the playoffs. It's like, okay, now we've done, done all the hard work. Now we got to work even harder. And next week, they'll work harder against the Oilers in the Dome. That's a noontime kickoff. The 49ers keep that game lead in the NFC West. They clinch a playoff spot. Montana had 22 straight completions. That's a new NFL record. Washington uh, beat the Cardinals. That helped the Saints playoff bid 34-17. And the Giants knocked off the Eagles. So that paved the way for the Saints' 9-3 record to clinch at, uh, at worst a wild card spot. Tonight, moments ago, the Bears beat the Vikings. Minnesota would be the Saints' opponent. As things stand now, they would play their wild card game here in the Superdome. Upset in Cleveland, the Colts and Browns fighting for divisional leads. Dean Biasucci of the Colts kicked three field goals. It was 9 to nothing. Indianapolis at the half. Bernie Kosar rallied the Browns. Third quarter, 
heaves it for Brian Brennan and touchdown to close the gap, then driving in the fourth quarter. Colts force Ernest Biner to lose the ball, and that preserves a 9-7 Colt victory. Indianapolis on top of the AFC East. The Browns drop into a tie for first in the AFC Central again. A bit of an upset two-point win for the Colts in Cleveland. The Oilers over the Chargers. As we mentioned, Houston, the next opponent, Warren Moon, did play for the Oilers today. The Steelers upset the slumping Seahawks 13-9. Denver rallied to beat New England. The Broncos take over first place in the AFC West. At the Coliseum, the Raiders and Bills. And Mark Wilson, a hot hand Monday night, along with Bo Jackson here, hitting James Lofton for a 41-yarder and a touchdown 337 yards for Wilson. And three scoring passes. The final one here going to... Dulkey Williams after he looks off the first receiver. Raiders playing for pride, and they win their second straight, hurting Buffalo's playoff chances. The final on that one, 34-21. to 21. In other games, Atlanta upset the Cowboys. Dallas going nowhere, 21-10. to 10. It was the Bengals in overtime. Esiason, 368 yards passing. The Rams are hot. They've won four straight. Jim Everett had two touchdown passes on the Monday. Tonight on fourth down on four, tis the season to be jolly in New Orleans. The Saints make the playoffs for the first time ever. A star is born in Tampa as the Saints see vintage Vinny. And we'll have a musical look at the hottest team in the NFL. Fourth down on four is brought to you by Superior Acura, New York Life, McDonald's, and the Louisiana Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Bottler of Diet Coke, the one calorie cola, just for the taste of it. And now, here's Chris Myers. All right, those are uh, some of the fans who contributed to the noise that Vinny Testaverde couldn't handle as the Saints pulled it out today. Good evening, all. Welcome to our show. The NFL's longest non-playoff drought has come to an end. The Saints, who were the only ones not to have reached the postseason party, are partying tonight. And even Jim Mora, I'm sure, is partying. Last week, the winning season was locked up, and this afternoon in the uh, sold-out Superdome, a playoff position was sealed. The Saints outscored the Bucks 44-34. to Most points scored and the most given up by the Saints this season. But their ninth win and combined with the losses by the Eagles and Cardinals nailed down at worst a wild card spot and the Saints are just a game back of the 49ers in the NFC West with three games to play and this was Jim Mora after the game yeah I think we ought to talk about the playoffs what the, heck? <laughs> the postseason reality set in on 67,000 fans at the Superdome who never stopped believing Vinny Testaverde at his first NFL start fumbled the first two times the Bucks had the ball. Bruce Clark recovered the first and set up Bobby Abear, who flipped two touchdown passes to tight end John Tice. Yeah, you know, you have your base offense, which, you know, you've had since training camp, and uh, we've, we've worked on things in training camp that we, we don't pull out till you know, say this week or last week, and uh, you don't want to get in a groove where a, key, a team can key on you. The same offense was out to make a statement and did when it was 14-0 just six minutes into the game. I knew it was going to be a kind of game where we had to you know, do something offensively. Um, you know, it, it was just a long, it just seemed like a long game. But it wasn't long at all for those who waited 21 years for this. Vinny Testaverde battled the dome decibels enough to make a game of it. 369 yards, he ran for a score, passed for three more. It was a match of catch-up for Tampa. We got so far ahead until, you know, it's just hard to keep maintaining that type of intensity when, you know, when, when you are ahead like that. But we tried. I really think the guys made a conscious effort to, to keep going, but it, sometimes it's tough to, you know, keep that uh, same intensity. With a seven-yard run from Reuben Mays and a score from Dalton Hilliard after one of two exceptional Mel Gray punt returns, the Saints had a 28-10 advantage at halftime. The Bucks outscored the Saints 24-16 in the second half, but the Saints never lost control of the game, making the big plays when they had to, like Eric Martin's two grabs that kept drives going and kept the Saints on their path to the playoffs. We played hard. We were ready to play. We had a good week's preparation, and we... Our guys played hard. They really did. And uh, uh, I'm just thankful that we were able to win it. And I'm just uh, as happy as I can be right now. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, enjoying this for a few hours and then uh, getting ready to beat Houston. You know, I was raised around here and I know how the, 
the fans and how the community it was always behind the Saints and it seemed like things never worked out and you know playing a few years here and now actually getting the playoffs is just uh, it's just a great feeling and that I, I think hasn't really hit me yet. I'd be disappointed if we didn't go high up in, in the playoff and make it. I, I see that the team that, that we that, that we got to play to me is San Francisco. Whenever we meet up with that team, they're gonna prove who the best and who should go to the Super Bowl. Jim Mora isn't talking Super Bowl, but with a nine and three record and the longest running winning streak in the NFL, six games, the Saints absolutely, positively, no question, clinched a playoff spot. So now, coach, how about it? <laughs> yeah, you bet we are. You bet we are. When you get there, you are a playoff team, and the New Orleans Saints, 1987, are a playoff team. All right, and we're relieved, Jim. The past three weeks, the defense has got most of the ink. Uh, the Saint offense has put just enough points on the board to make the difference. This week, though, it was really the offense that helped to uh, hold off the Tampa Bay rally. The Saints offensive explosion keyed by Bobby Hebert, who had his best day as a pro. He hit on 16 of 24 passes for 255 yards and two scores. Hebert's steady play offset the Testaverde onslaught. Mel Gray set up two Saints touchdowns with a pair of scintillating returns, including a team record 80-yarder in the second quarter. Eric Martin didn't catch a pass in the first half and only two for the game, but both set up crucial scores late in the contest as Tampa was attempting a comeback. All right, joining us now in the studio, I guess we can call him the elder statesman. You heard Jim Moore allude to him earlier in our newscast. Uh, Stan Brock, he's been with the franchise through the toughest of times, and I appreciate you taking time out from your partying tonight because <laughs> I know you don't get much of it with Jim Moore to, to be with us. This has got to be a special feeling. This is a great feeling. This is, you know, being 1-15 in 15 at one time in our career and thinking, God, this thing's never going to end. We're jinxed. Uh, we got a great franchise now, a lot of uh, winners on our team. Got some guys out of the USFL that are helping us. Uh, tremendously and uh, I don't know it's it's hard to put it in words been through the, th the thin of it and now we're right in the thick of it. What, what, what is the biggest difference Dan to I mean they, they've done in two years here things have really turned. I don't know I it's like I say it's hard to put your finger on it it's something that uh, we work hard every year you come into the season you think you're gonna win and and as the season goes on your dreams begin to fade out now our dreams are alive and, and everything's going good uh, Coach Moore is steady, like he said in the interview earlier. We got a couple hours to really enjoy this and have a good time. Tomorrow we'll go back in and watch film, and uh, we're going to get told what we did wrong and, and uh, said what we did right. We'll be ready for Houston. Yeah, the offense did a lot of good things. We talked during the week. You said, "Hey, we're due," and you you told A Bear something before the game. Yeah, this morning uh, before the game, I just went up to Bobby and I go, "How about this? How about 21 points in the first quarter, and uh, you so you throw for uh, 300 and, or uh, 300 yards." and we just have a good time with it. And he said, yeah, that sounds good. And I didn't even know what he threw until I just saw the statistics come out. But uh, he had a great day today, and, and he's done a great job for us. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, Stan Brock, and we'll have a look, too, at the debut of Vinny Testaverde. That's ahead here on 4th Down on 4. Stay with us. The, the hair by Brian Bosworth here. These are, these are some of the fans that in the sold out Superdome, they had what, just over 66,000 who, uh, who made a lot of noise. There were, there were exceptional signs uh, set up around uh, that uh, all I want for Christmas is my playoff seat. And uh, well, the Saints fans will have that. They sang the Hoodat song for a little while. They dressed in, uh, in black and gold and absolutely incredible. Uh, you said it got a little quiet there though in, in that second half. It did, it seemed like uh as the fans went, so did the Saints. I think that in the third quarter, it became a uh, became a lull. I think that the you know we we looked like we kind of took a little bit of time off, and as soon as the fans got back into it, we kind of picked it back up. So the fans make a big difference, and and I don't know if they realize it, but uh, being on the road, uh, when you hear all that cheering going on, uh, when it's third and long, linemen can't hear, quarterback can't get his signals off, they make a big difference. Did a great job today. Did the offense feel a little bit of uh, I don't I don't think pressure is the right word, but the the necessity to keep scoring because you see a guy like Testaverde get in there and just do some amazing things and put points on the board for Tampa? Yeah, sitting on the sidelines, you could see him getting hot, and, and, and the more he was throwing the ball, he was com completing the long passes. It started getting a little bit scary there at, at one point, uh, but the defense allowed us to get the first 14 points in, in uh, early, so it was a, a feeling that we can score. All we got to do is just keep going, and we know the defense can shut them down. We've seen them play in the, in the past, so it's a, it's a 
it's a real different feeling on the whole Saints organization being an offensive lineman. You know the defense is going to shut them down, and all we got to do is put some points on the board and we can win the game. And you did that 44 points uh, for the uh, Saint offense. Now, remember the Dolphins' great passer, Dan Marino? He made his first splash in the NFL against the Saints. He came in for David Woodley. Looked sharp, but Miami lost the game to the Saints. Another great one to be was in action today, as Joe Amato reports. As it turns out, Testaverde practiced all week knowing he was the starter. Before the game, I asked him if he was nervous or not, and he said, no, no, I'm ready to play. His first NFL start, though, was very shaky. Two fumbles led to 14 points for the Saints. By the end of the game, though, you had to be impressed with Testaverde. Heck, he was bringing the Bucks back. Kind of looked like John Elway. And that's the most points the Saints have given up this year. The former Heisman winner from Miami completed 22 of 47 for 369 yards. I felt real good, uh, you know, going in. Uh, but uh, of course, we were playing the catch-up game from from the start, you know, 14 to nothing. But I never believed uh, for a second that we couldn't win the ball game. Testaverde was intercepted twice, but said we won the second half. The Bucks have a lot to build on. The main thing that I'm the most pleased about is he has got great, I mean, absolutely great poise. Tester Birdie on first down, throws deep. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing. I think you could drop a Sherman tank on his head and it wouldn't shake him. But uh, when you've got that to work with during the heat of the battle and he understands what you're talking about and doing things, making adjustments during the course of the game, that's a great asset. And so on a day when the Saints started a new era, so did Tampa Bay. Hey, you played a hell of a game. Joe Amato for fourth down on four. Well, Testaverde, you said, was, was outstanding. Now, what your team gets rolling six in a row. You've been here long enough to be on the bad side of things, as we talked about. Do you get superstitious a little bit? Yeah, I think that uh, everybody does. I know that on the road, I wear the same tie and uh, have the same kind of uniform on the airplane. And I even heard today that uh, Mrs. Mora was worried about me doing so many interviews as an offensive lineman. So uh, <laughs> I just want to tell Mrs. Mora, don't worry about it. We'll handle it. And in this way, it's going to be. All right, yeah, Jim Mora, a little superstitious about coming on this show as well after his two appearances last year but he will be here as we will continue with the Saints through the playoffs uh, in going into this game did you did you feel like the offense uh, needed to really pick it up and, and get on the ball with the defense yeah the pressure was on you know we've been playing well enough and kind of scoring the points when we need to and we come out in third quarters and make a long drive and kind of make things work and uh, our defense has been carrying us and it's kind of like our turn to to pull the rope a little bit and, and I think we did it today I think that uh, Vinny Testaverde probably surprised a lot of people you know you got Pat Swilling had his hands on him all day but just could never seem to bring him down and uh, this is something that that uh, we like as offensive linemen is give us a ball and let's see what we can do and, and it seemed to work today and I think Bobby Hebert had a great day that was impressive. Really did. Real quick before we break uh, uh, Jim Moore told us playoff team what did he tell you guys in the locker did he finally say yeah. hey you know we're no. in? Uh, no, we're not done. This is, that's our uh, deal is uh, we're not done. Uh, we've won nine games now, and we've got to go, and, and uh, let's play Houston and see what happens from there. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at the teams that gave the Saints a helping hand as well as Houston, their next opponent. Welcome back to fourth down on four and thanks for staying up with us. The Saints uh, playoff was uh, made possible so much uh, more quickly because the Cardinals and Eagles both lost today. Let's go to those games and show you how they went. East Rutherford, New Jersey, the Giants needed to knock off Philadelphia. Phil Sims looking and uh, finding Stephon Baker in the fourth quarter of the rookie. It was 20 to six Giants, but the Eagles came back behind Randall Cunningham who was having a tremendous year. He threw two touchdowns in the final three and a half minutes of it. Watch this nice catch by Kenny. Jackson as the ball is tipped and they went into overtime. He was just inbounds in the OT. Raul Allegra, a 28-yarder. Giants pull it out 23-20. to The Eagles are out of the picture. And St. Louis Redskins uh, trying to wrap up the NFC East. And Jay Schrader looking long for number 84. And he has it to go. 84 yards, a touchdown. It was 7 0 Washington on top. Cardinals tied the score at 10 in the second quarter as Lomax hits JT Smith. And the Cards took a 13 10 lead. But Washington regains it for a good trader, a seven yarder. And uh, in your face as the Redskins uh, clinch the division. And 
and the final was 34 to 17. They win it in the East. The 49ers are trying to clinch the West, but right now all they have is a wild card sewn up at Green Bay. No problem for Joe Montana. On the quarterback draw, 10 yards. It was 14-0 in the second quarter. In the third quarter, Paul Ott Carruth keeps the Packers close with a one-yard dive. Extra point missed. It was 16-12. But watch this one in the fourth quarter. Montana and Rice team up again to close the door on the pack. Montana hit his first 17 passes, and he completed 22 straight, an NFL record. The Niners awesome and winning at 23-12. Still a game up on the Saints in the NFC West. In Minnesota tonight, Mike Ditka not happy about having to play in Doors. Remember the line about the roller rink and all that, but the Bears put a smile on his face as McMahon hit Willie Gull to make it 13 to nothing. McMahon later injured. Vikings come back. Tommy Kramer gets knocked out, but he completes the pass and a great run from Anthony Carter with a nice move. 14 to 13. Vikes led. They held a 24-23 lead in the fourth quarter, but Mike Tomzak, you see how much time is left in for McMahon, hits Dennis Gentry who takes the completion all the way in for the touchdown and the Bears win it. They clinch the Central Division. The Vikings still thinking wild card. The final was 30 to 24. In other games, Atlanta upset Dallas 21 to 10. The Raiders win over Buffalo. Mark Wilson, the hot hand, 34 21 the final there. The Bengals win in overtime uh, 30 to 27. And it was the Rams. Jim Everett's biggest day as a pro and Charles White over 100 yards rushing. The Rams defeat the Lions. The Steelers defeated the Seahawks. Pittsburgh comes back with a win. The Colts over the Browns 9 to 7 as the Browns fumbled late in that game, killing a field goal chance that would have won it. Denver rallied behind John Elway to beat New England. 31 to 20, and the Monday nighter in the AFC East has the Jets against the Dolphins. Now, Al Saunders and the Chargers uh, took on the Oilers, a couple of teams that were slumping. Dan Fouts fumbles here, and Robert Lyles picks it up and takes it all the way. 55 yards for the touchdown. It was 7 0 Houston in the first quarter. Oilers open it up on the third. Mike Rozier from the one-yard line, and he dives in to make it 27 to five. And after every kickoff, the Oilers' uh, mojo comes out and gets the tee and uh, slides in there. Uh, he's not doing this enough, though, because he could lose a few LBs. He's safe, and so were the Oilers. Fourth quarter, <laughs> Warren Moon on the keeper, and he takes it in. Remember, he did practice all week, but the Oilers beat San Diego 33 to 18 was the final and stand. The Oilers up next, obviously, you haven't had time to think about them, but you did say you focus on that next opponent. So you're thinking, uh, let's take Houston, let's win the rest of our games and see what happens with the Niners. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of our games. I know we got the Oilers coming up, and that's who we're going to have to concentrate on, and that's probably been the biggest difference in our season this year as the years in the past is that Coach Moore never allows anyone to think ahead. Uh, we won this game. Let's have a great time tonight. Tomorrow we'll come in and find out what we did wrong. Wednesday we come back and we'll work hard and, uh, and get ready for the Oilers. Okay, for being our guest, you get a dinner for two. You also get the, uh, this is from Sue's Jewelry, a 14 karat gold uh, tie clip that is uh, has the Saints emblem and of course with your wardrobe boy I don't <laughs> I just want to tell Sue thanks a lot this is really going to come in handy with all the ties that I wear and you, I know that coach Moore will be you impressed. have to put a tie on to go to this restaurant you can pin that on your hat or something like that but yeah. thanks thanks for being I'll with get what, that done. what are you going to do after this now we're going to let you go I, know. Here. I might head out of the streets I think some go of my buddies are out there. a lot of Saints fans running crowded, around, but make it? sure you make practice tomorrow I'll right? have my uh, my uh, tie class, or okay. whatever you call it. Put it on a tie, I'll have it from, on. From Sue's on Middle Road. Thanks again. Okay. Hey, great year. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I All appreciate right. it. An offensive lineman getting a lot of credit. He deserves it. Up next, we'll see how things stand in the wild and wacky AFC, and we'll salute the Saints with a song. Stay with us. All right, Chris Myers back with you here on Fourth Down on Four. We will continue our show uh, throughout the Saints season. When they go through the playoffs, we'll be here every Sunday night with you to update their situation and uh, hopefully have good news. And right now, the, the situation looks pretty good for the Saints. You know by now that they clinched at least a wild card spot. The NFC t uh, teams that will be in the playoffs, th these are the teams. Now, it's just a matter of who goes where. The 49ers are in the playoffs, too, with a 10-2 and record. The Bears have won the Central Division. The Redskins have won the Eastern Division. So the Saints will either be a wild card and play the Vikings or the Saints could win the NFC West. They would have the first week off as San Francisco would be the wild card and play Minnesota. Now the AFC picture is very unclear. In the West, Denver now has the best record as San Diego is slumping. Seattle is just hanging on. The Raiders and Kansas City are thinking about next year. In the East, well, that's as wide open, too. Now New England is two games off the race. The Colts lead 
uh, by a game over the Jets, who play uh, tomorrow night against Miami in the Monday Nighter. Buffalo plays the Colts next week, so they can get back into that race if they win that one against Indianapolis. In the Central, Cleveland blew a golden opportunity today. Houston took advantage by winning a three-way tie with the Browns, Oilers, and Steelers, and the Bengals have been a major disappointment, so Sam Weish uh, may uh, have to straighten things out if he wants to get his team in next year. We'll continue, of course, to update the playoff situation uh, each Sunday night here on 4th Down on 4. Time to re, uh, reward some lucky fan with two Saints tickets to the next home game. Compliments of Diet Coke, and you know these things are worth a lot. Al Grunts of New Orleans, hey, you're going to see the Oilers and the Saints next Sunday here on the Dome, and you can bet that one will sell out. If you'd like to win a pair of tickets, all you have to do is send your name and address on a postcard to Diet Coke Ticket Giveaway. Uh, WWL TV 1024 North Rampart Street. That's New Orleans 70116. And we got to wrap things up here. It's been a great day. Wild in the dome. It was wild with all the fifth signs and the fans and the hollering. It was really neat. The Saints are home again next Sunday, as we mentioned, with the Oilers. And the sky's the limit. Thanks to Stan Brock for being with us. And we may head out to Bourbon Street. Now, thanks you two for watching. We leave you with an updated version of The Saints Go Marching in, sung by Luther Kent. And uh, Dr. John, Bob Parkinson supplies the pictures. Bob Reigert put it together, and the Saints are making it enjoyable. Here come the Saints. to you by Superior Acura, New York Life, McDonald's, and the Louisiana Coca-Cola Bottling Company, bottler of Diet Coke, the one calorie cola, just for the taste of it. Ha <laughs> ha!